Hello everyone, this is Mgauza, the self-proclaimed physics detective. Today I'm presenting a summary of my investigation into Bruce Banner's transformations into the Hulk. When Bruce Banner becomes too enraged, he transforms from a mild manner man who, according to Marvel.com, weighs 128 pounds, into the Incredible Hulk, a behemoth that, again, according to Marvel.com, weighs 1,040 pounds. There's just one problem. Conservation of mass. Conservation of mass is an idea that dates back as far as the ancient Greeks who put it like this. There is nothing that comes from nothing. In other words, everything has to come from something. What this means is that the 912 pounds that Bruce Banner puts on in becoming the Hulk can't just magically appear, it has to come from somewhere. In answering the question of where this matter comes from, Jeff Barker, one of the writers for the Hulk series, reportedly stated on Twitter that the Hulk gets his extra mass by absorbing ambient gamma energy and converting it into mass. While this may sound absurd, it's fully supported by the principle of mass-energy equivalence. The correct mathematical connection between mass and energy was first put forth by Albert Einstein and can be expressed by what is arguably the most famous equation in all of physics. This equation tells us that energy can be converted into mass, and vice versa, with the speed of light being the exchange rate. For example, if all the energy released by burning four gallons of gasoline were converted into matter, it would be enough to create a single grain of sand. So if Bruce Banner has enough energy at his disposal, he could create the 912 pounds of matter that he gains by transforming into the Hulk. Unfortunately, conservation of mass is not the only conservation law that the Hulk has to try and work around. In addition to mass being conserved, matter has other properties, such as charge and spin, that are conserved. One of the consequences of this is that energy can only be used to create matter if, and only if, it also creates an equal and corresponding amount of antimatter. For example, hydrogen, the simplest atom, is made of one proton and one electron. In order to make it from pure energy, enough must be available to create not only the electron and the proton, but also their corresponding antiparticles, the antiproton and the positron. This poses some interesting logistical problems. Namely, the Hulk either needs to absorb enough energy to create 912 pounds of matter and 912 pounds of antimatter, fully then to discard the unneeded antimatter, or he needs to absorb enough energy to create 456 pounds of matter and 456 pounds of antimatter that he then holds on to carefully. The problem with the first scenario is that when a particle of regular matter comes into contact with its corresponding antimatter particle, the two are annihilated. Or, in other words, all the matter of both is converted into energy. So the 912 pounds of discarded antimatter would end up destroying 912 pounds of nearby matter. In the second scenario, the Hulk's body would have to have special measures in place to ensure that the antimatter never comes into contact with the regular matter that his body is made of. For example, scientists typically contain antimatter using magnetic fields. Now while all of this is technically possible, there's the question of whether or not it's probable. Since all of this is dependent on there being a sufficient supply of ambient gamma energy, we need to know how much energy he needs, and whether or not it's likely that ambient gamma levels are sufficient. In calculating the amount of energy needed, let's do so for the second scenario, because it requires less mass and therefore less energy. In order to produce the 912 pounds needed, Bruce Banner would have to absorb a grand total of 37.3 exajoules, or 8.9 gigatons of TNT. To put this into perspective, this is about 178 times as much energy as was released by the Tsar Bomba, the most powerful nuclear warhead ever detonated. While this number is astronomically high, let's not rule out the possibility that such a store of ambient gamma energy exists. But first, we need to talk about what gamma rays actually are. Gamma rays are a form of electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves are also what make up microwaves, radio waves, visible light, and x-rays. So to draw an analogy, the color yellow is to a middle C, as gamma rays are to the notes produced by dog whistles that are too high to be heard by human beings. 
What this tells us is that, just as a room won't have any visible light in it without either a window to let in sunlight, or a lamp to give off light, so too will a room not have any gamma rays without some kind of source. What then produces gamma rays? Gamma rays come from two predominant sources. First, nuclear reactions such as the fusion reactions that power the sun, and second, radioactive decay reactions of certain unstable atoms. First, let's consider the sun. Using Planck's law, I attempted to calculate how much gamma radiation the sun gives off. However, I quickly discovered that it gives off so little that none of the computers I have access to were able to deal with such small numbers. In trying to get a rough estimate of the sun's gamma output, I eventually came up with 3.3 times 10 to the negative 36,065 watts per meter squared. That's a decimal point, followed by over 36,000 zeros before you finally hit the first three. Add to this the fact that most solar gamma rays are filtered out by the atmosphere and it becomes clear that the sun could not be the source of the Hulk's extra mass. Let's look instead at radioisotopes. The term radioactive decay refers to an unstable atom ejecting particles in order to become more stable. It's important to note that the weight of the ejected particles and what's left afterwards is less than the weight of the original atom. The reason for this is because a portion of the mass of the original atom is converted into energy used to eject the emitted particles. The reason that it's important to note this fact is that powering the Hulk using gamma rays from radioactive material means that matter is converted into energy through radioactive decay and then turned back into matter by the Hulk. So, since his extra mass would ultimately be coming from radioactive material, he would need a bare minimum of 912 pounds, based on conservation of mass and energy alone. To further complicate matters, only a very small portion of matter is ever converted into energy in a decay reaction. For example, if his gamma source were made entirely of the isotope cesium-137, then doing the appropriate math reveals that in order to transform in 20 seconds, you would need a cesium-137 source that weighs as much as roughly one trillion adult African elephants. While there are more potent gamma emitters than cesium-137, the numbers still aren't very promising. For example, using cobalt-60 instead, he would still need as much as would weigh the same as over 20 billion elephants. So, to conclude, the idea that the Hulk's extra mass could come from ambient gamma energy is very far-fetched in that there is no place on Earth with enough background gamma radiation for the Hulk to draw from. But I will leave the final rolling to you. You can let your voice be heard in the comments below! If you're feeling skeptical about my findings, keep an eye out for my upcoming case file video, where I'll explore my math in detail. At any rate, if you like this video, why not like? subscribe, and perhaps even watch some of my other videos. If you have an idea for my next episode, send an email to gauzar at yandex.com, or check out my Facebook page at facebook.com slash physicsdetective. While you're there, you can check out updates that I release about progress on future episodes and more. Once again, this is Gauzar, the self-proclaimed physics detective, signing off.